day and it's time for the health segment. Today we're moving away from cancer even though it's still Breast Cancer Awareness Month and I hope that you have been checked. But we're discussing stroke. Now globally, stroke is a second leading cause of death um, amongst you know, people and also when it comes to Ghana, it is described as one of the top five leading causes of death amongst people and also um, the leading cause of frequent admissions in hospitals. And today we'll be taking a closer look at how you can help someone who um, has been struck with the disease, what are the leading causes, risk factors, and all of that. And in the studios, I have a recovering patient uh, who will be telling us his story, and so it's good to have him. Also, we have a doctor. And later, I will be taking a look at how you can help someone with an emergency nurse on standby. But before we even start this conversation, we went on the streets to find out what people know about stroke. Take a look. And stroke, if stroke catch you are, you are Maybe your leg or your hand, maybe blood cannot pass through it again. By low blood pressure, high blood pressure can cause stroke. And then also uh, when you have poor circulation of blood in your system, you know, it causes a blood stasis. It makes the blood unable to flow well in your body, so it can also lead to a stroke. Diabetes patients are also vulnerable, they are likely to have stroke. Uh, smoking, drinking, all these things can probably also lead to stroke. It's very, very uh, dangerous, you know. Yeah. Um, a sickness that sometimes maybe it happened to my uncle. So the experience that I have is he wake up in the in the he wake, he sleep when he wanted to wake up in the morning and he feel like ah it's, you can't get you know raise yourself from the bed. That strength is is gone. I don't know before. Let me ask, before the thing will happen. Um, he lost some money, right? So I can see that is what is giving her him uh, thinking, thinking, and the thing come. So I don't know. You think stroke is stress? Yeah, too much stress can give you stroke. I don't really know what stroke is, but I could tell the symptoms when you, um, part of your body is not really working very well. Uh, for example, I have two hands and you realize that one of my hands, I cannot feel it. That sensibility is not there. In normal youth, yeah, yeah, I say alcohol. We take alcohol, a hard alcohol that it may cause. It is a kind of alcohol, a hard alcohol that youth prefer. Uh, normal be to say we then 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 the trauma and then the starting now near you know. It may a cause my way Vincent, Mujani and Waki, and a cause that we know. Mama will know my aunt me, Mujani and Flu will. And then I want a cause. Well, so at least people have a fair knowledge what constitutes stroke. But just in case you can't really define it and you can't really tell what exactly stroke is. Let me introduce you to my guest and we'll give you all that explanation. So seated next to me is Chief Dr. Ben D. Jabuni. He's the president of the Stroke Association Support Network in Ghana. Thank you so much for joining me much, and it's good to have you. And also I have a person who's living with stroke. He's been living with it for the past 11 years. Thanks to God, now he can walk with the aid um, you know, of a stick, but he's much better than before. And his name is Mr. Samuel Sedodo. Thank you so much for joining me oh, as well. Okay. Good to have you, and I hope you're feeling better. Oh, okay. You are? I'd want to start with you first before Doc even comes in. Okay. So tell me, when did this happen, uh, and how did it happen? Um, lady, first, I thank you for this opportunity. You're welcome. But at first, me, I don't know anything about stroke. Mm. I just, I was very jovial, and then very, how to say, very uh, hard working, I could say. Okay. I do every social, every social life. In fact, mm. people like me, okay. I like people mm. as a farmer. Oh, you were a farmer? As a farmer. All right. So I have friends, I have uh, customers. Mm. But I may say, at my, at my past, I do smoke, I do drink. Okay. All of a sudden, one day I was off. Wait, hold on. You, did you did you say you smoke or you don't smoke? 
I smoke. Oh, you used to smoke I a lot. Smoke. How I many sticks in a day could you? No, smoke? no, no, that one. I oh, you weren't I a just, chain. For smoking, it's just like, it's just I play. Okay. But for drink, I will say for drink, yeah, I can drink. Oh. Okay, so maybe in a day, how many bottles can you oh, finish? No. Could you, can for, you tell? For alcohol, you can't take You can't really bottle. tell, eh? You okay. can't take a, a bottle of that. Mm. But you can take something which can activate you. Mm -hmm. and so, in my life, in fact, the time I lost my health, in fact, I became very miserable. How did it happen? What ah, happened to you? All of a sudden, I feel, first I felt headache. Mm. Severe headache. Mm. So I went to hospital. Then all of uh, I was say three weeks of treatment. I couldn't move again. They were treating you for the headache, or could they but tell that were, you were getting a stroke? Well, as I went there, they said for headache. They were treating me headache. Okay. Yeah. Then just one night. Then they said they are discharging me after that whole day off. My just... children were all uh, crying. In fact, many people they say I'm dead. You just went off. I went off. Completely. Okay. So in fact, they took me home, and for them, they say, "I'm okay. I'm down." So. The hospital said you were okay. No, no, no. My children thought I was you were okay. Dead. Okay, okay. And then they say I was dead. I was dead. So they didn't know what to do. Mm. Then this took me a, a complete three years in bed. Okay, but at least around that time, that's when you realized what was wrong with you because yes. the doctor yes. mentioned that you had suffered from stroke. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you couldn't move? I couldn't move. Could you speak? At all. Okay. And in fact, I can't sense anything. You lost your sense of smell? Smell, for that one, up to now. Even I, till now, you can't. Now, I, don't, I can't differentiate between sweet and then a bad scent. So you lost your taste buds as well. I wow. lost my taste. Okay. And then I could see, say, at times too, I can't recognize, uh, remember things properly. Okay. So I could see, say, this thing has a lot of effect on my life. Mm. It cost me. I lost my job, I lost friends, my mm. have a broken home. Mm. And in fact, up to now, I could see, say, I thank God for letting Sustinet came to give us awareness. Okay. And Did that's how come you're better today. Yeah. How old were you when it happened to you? Do you remember? So how old were you? I was around 59, somehow. When you suffered the stroke. Yeah. Okay, let me bring doctor in. And I wanted to hear his story mm -hmm. because I'm sure that a lot of people who may have suffered from stroke yeah. could identify with him as well. And so let's take it from the beginning. What could lead to stroke? Well, let's start this way. Mm. Stroke is quite common mm. uh, around the world and particularly in Ghana I have uh, noticed that stroke really is a heart attack. Okay. Uh, so a, a heart attack in the sense that the heart is connected in many ways to stroke mm. but let me say stroke is really a brain attack originating from the heart. Mm. Okay. Blood is pumped from the heart. Now, the, the brain can be attacked in two ways. Mm -hmm. It can either be attacked directly by blood not flowing to the brain. Mm -hmm. That is an obstruction. Okay. And you have a difficulty with the brain absorbing blood. All right. I, I, am mm -hmm. I get, mm -hmm. making myself So clear. you stated the two. Yes. So one with the brain not reaching the... The, the, the blood not the reaching blood the brain. The blood not reaching the brain. Yes. And the second one? The second, well, it's al always the blood not reaching, reaching the, the brain. brain. Okay. And there's two ways the blood cannot reach the brain. Mm -hmm. The first way is if the blood is prevented by an obstruction. Okay. Of the vessels that take blood to the brain. Mm -hmm. The second way is if the vessel actually bursts, breaks open, mm -hmm. and blood pours into the brain. What could lead to the vessel breaking? The vessel will break, for example, if you have a high blood pressure. Mm. Pressure in a or by virtue of growing old, mm. basically, the arteries become inelastic, 
They have been pounded and pounded over the years by, for example, high blood pressure. Mm. They become rough and rugged, and bits may well break off, fatty tissue mm -hmm. break off and block off the artery. Okay. And if the artery is blocked off, blood will find it hard to get to the brain. And brain needs oxygen. Yeah. Blood carries oxygen, oxygen to the brain. Yeah. If the brain is deprived of oxygen for just eight minutes, it will begin to die. Hmm. Just eight minutes? Just eight minutes, it will begin to die. Okay. So um, if that's the case, this is something that happens inside the body, within the body. And usually a lot of people say that I, did, I couldn't even tell that I was going to get a stroke. It just happened all of a sudden. That means that you can't really tell when this is going to happen no, to you, you can cannot, you? you cannot mm. tell. Mm. And stroke can happen to you anytime, any, any, any day, anytime, anywhere. When you say me. You say me, and me young. you and me, and him, anybody at all. But I anybody. thought it was more prevalent in no, it's the not. older... No, that it's not. Uh, that is not correct. Okay. Brain... Uh, 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 stroke can attack anybody. anybody of any age. Even a baby? Even a baby. Hmm. So it is not a disease of old age. It is not a disease of uh, adults. Mm -hmm. It is a disease of everybody. You can be attacked by stroke anytime, anywhere, any day. You and I and, and everybody him. is at risk. What could lead to that? I mean, we talked about what happens inside the body, but I'm sure it's more about your lifestyle. He says that he was drinking a lot. He was smoking as well. Um, but he was active. And you think that if someone is active, then maybe, you know, the organs are working normal and so he should be fine. What are some of the lifestyle and psychosocial... Well, listening to him, factors, obviously, yeah. they, they, he was uh, at risk in, in a number of ways. Okay. And there are risk factors which... Um, which we must all be aware of, mm -hmm. and which the Stroke Association Support Network, Ghana, is working hard to raise awareness on. Mm. He, he mentioned stroke, uh, smoking. Smoking is a risk factor. Okay. If you, you are at risk if you smoke a lot. A lot? Yes. Okay. Well, well yes, if you smoke Or once a lot, you smoke, whether it's a lot or not, you are at risk. You are at risk. Okay. It counts towards uh, a, a risk factor. Mm. Uh, if uh, you drink, he also mentioned drink, mm -hmm. you are at risk. Not to cut you, before you continue, there are people who smoke shisha. And, you know, we, we've heard that shisha is even more dangerous. But a lot of young people think that smoking shisha is just, you know, for fun and it doesn't have mm -hmm. die effects or consequences on you. Could that also be a, um, you know, a risk factor? Yes, we, it's, been, okay. it's been researched. All right. Uh, okay. Although it's not publicized you know, uh, commonly. But it is. Uh, but but it, it, okay. can, it, it is a risk you factor. You can carry on, doctor. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Then we, uh, I'm not sure if uh, uh, the gentleman had high blood pressure. Mm. Because high blood, blood pressure is a risk factor. It's probably the most important a risk factor for stroke. What leads to high blood pressure? A number of things. Okay. A diet can lead to high blood pressure. Mm. Uh, and I think commonly it's because people have a poor diet. Okay. Uh, a lot of people take uh, a lot of salt in their diet. Uh, mm. uh, and that can create uh, 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 high blood pressure mm -hmm. because if you have a lot of sodium in your system. Mm -hmm. Sodium will increase the volume of blood All right. in, your, in your system. And, the, and the, the more blood there is in your system, the more pressure okay. it, will, it, it will experience being pushed from the heart to the brain. So you can't have too much blood in your body you because can, you that's can. dangerous. It, well, <laughs> if you have the volume of blood, yeah. there's only a certain amount that can that you, go through yeah. your system. And if you have but too you much can increase it if you have, you know, then it's like a torrent of water mm. suddenly coming from somewhere mm -hmm. and forcing its way through your system. Wow. Okay. Now, so that's high blood pressure is, is, is a very important um, uh, risk factor. Okay. Then we also have um, psychosocial uh, 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 problems. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, if you uh, suffer too much stress. Too much stress is a risk factor. Or if you have a prolonged period during which you are depressed, 
that can also create depression, depression and stress. You, you, <laughs> you probably find that uh, a bit odd, uh, but depression can create a number of physiological and also, of course, psychological difficulties mm. uh, for a person. And all coming together can create a situation where you may not be able to live a life, a healthy okay. life, okay. a healthy way of living. Mm. You may not be able to do this, and that over a prolonged period of time, you can, can. suffer a stroke. Okay. Okay. How do you, are you done with the risk factors or you oh, have there, some more? There, there, there are there, a number of them. There are a number of them. Okay. Heart, heart problems is another one. Mm. Diabetes is a, another risk factor. If you have diabetes, then you have a chance of. or there is a chance that uh, you could uh, suffer a, a stroke. A stroke. Okay. But all these things do, is coming together mm. as a group. Mm -hmm. Not just one of them. So just one cannot. No, not not one. Can, one cannot just uh, predispose you to uh, to suffer a stroke. They all act in combination to create that 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 uh, problem mm. of uh, stroke. I see. Before I ask my next question, there are people on the streets who also wanted to ask Doctor um, a few questions. We'll come back and take a look at how you can detect stroke early. And we have an emergency nurse who will run us through some, um, you know, activity here in the studio just to help you as well. So let's take a look at what people had to ask our doctor. I think um, I saw her, and the following day I saw her walking some star, having a stroke. Like half of her side, uh, side is gone. So what I want to ask is. What really will cause someone who is so strong and just the next day the person will start developing uh, symptoms or start having stroke at the one side? So. Uh, uh, then uh, normally when we say ABI will be taking too much uh, sugar or it will cause but you will be saying then Specifically, then a course on Casa. And your solution be a bit to me, a bois, a bit to me, a chakra. I want to find out what causes a stroke mm -hmm. and there is any um, solution to it. Because um, normally, what you hear is that this person is suffering from stroke or he has been paralyzed by some part of his body. But um, you, you get advertisements on. Um, solution or uh, medicine that will cure the disease. By the end, you realize that still the person will still be facing um, that same um, challenges. So I want to know whether there is a medicine that will give hundred percent cure to that disease. I didn't find a stroke. So Ah, a Adriana, ye di muana, sir, and sir, a binumum, nema, so could you back. Ugo a hour, no monsa, so a home. Obete, a suena soap, continuing control, be a view. Any bear, I was say, we are two weeks and answer one month to cry, I say, by then, or calling cheek, or stroke is, or what caused the stroke, or what is causing the stroke disease, because then time. When they say it's about sex, I don't believe. One, um, our grandfathers, like my grandfather married about three women. How does he manage them? He doesn't get stroke until he dies at the age of 85 years. So we do want to know what is what causes our stroke, what is causing the stroke. Some people say we should eat fruit more, and I don't, you, you can't understand. Educate me on things that probably can lead to you. Uh, causes of this uh, stroke and how I can prevent uh, probably uh, myself from uh, get, getting stroke because in, in Africa you know we we don't really much care about prevention yeah it, it already happens before we probably you know yeah yeah so I would like to ask the doctor what are some of the things I can uh, probably take to prevent stroke especially on my diet to my food? And if, uh, what do you do and uh, you, you will not get the stroke, or what consequences? Uh, what are you supposed to do, and you will not get stroke? 
All right, so these are questions from people in town, and they all want to know what causes stroke. We've talked about some risk factors, but there's one thing that a gentleman talked about, the man who said his grandfather was married to three people. We've heard, um, you know, that <laughs> sex or too much sex could also lead to stroke. I want to know, is that really true, and is sex a risk factor? That's an old wives' tale. Mm. That is not true. It's not true? No, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Uh, unless there is uh, recent research that I haven't read uh, <laughs> about, but uh, no, that, that is quite clearly an, an old wives' tale. I see. All right. So for those of you, because there have been stories online, as uh, someone was, uh, you know, someone got a heart attack as a result of having too much well, sex, if, and as a result, if, he got yes, stroke. Yes. If you have had problems, then then obviously mm. uh, that could lead you, as I said, mm -hmm. it's a clear risk factor. Yeah. Heart condition or mm -hmm. heart problems. Yeah. And that will lead you to have a stroke. All right. Now let's talk about how to detect stroke. I have come across a, a few writings where they say if you see that someone's lip is a bit twisted, twisted to the yes, left, yes. then maybe the person is likely to suffer from stroke. So yes. can you please run us through, um, you know, some of the things you need to look out for on a person in order to identify the disease? Yes, there is. Um, there are there are ways of uh, of. Uh, detecting if somebody's having a stroke. Okay. First of all, if you look at their face, mm -hmm. you will see you were just saying their mouth might be twisted yeah. in one direction. If you see that happening, then you know this person is having a stroke. Okay. If that is happening, if you ask them to raise both hands, both arms, you will find that it will be very difficult ah. for them uh, to do this. Okay. Now, if you ask them to, uh, to, to speak, to talk, they will find it, in, they will be slurred. Their okay. speech will be slurred, mm. and you can quite clearly see that it's not normal. All right. And, um, and I think the last one is, uh, they, um, it's a T, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Okay. So even whilst you are trying to get that together, let me just go to him quickly and ask him this. So did you notice any of these conditions? Because you said that you left the hospital went home and then all of a sudden you know you were bedridden but before that during the headache period was your speech slurred was it affected in any way were you able to move your limbs i was i was all active even now doing everything fine mm. oh i was as a farmer you know me i was making charcoal i do everything hard work everything mm. but the day i suffered this stroke all my people they were all amazed Mm. Nobody didn't... expected it at all. Okay. Myself, every, even the doctors, even a nurse sent me to a doctor, uh, hospital. She was really surprised that I had a, mm. a stroke. Okay. Uh, so this my sickness up to now, I couldn't you know say from this is the cause of, it, but through sadness, they are trying to make me be aware. Mm. So they are trying to. Uh, 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 explain things to me. Okay. Explain things to the community. Yeah. Bringing them to a free rehabilitation services. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they are trying to teach us how to know the causes and then the risk causes oh. so that we can avoid stroke and then the second chance of stroke. Okay. I'll come back to you and we'll talk about your, the treatment process because, um, and doctor will come in because I've read also that if you have a stroke, you, they cannot treat it only with pharmaceutical, um, you, know, um, you know, medicine. They also have to add herbal products to it. So I'll find out from doc if that is true. But our emergency nurse is ready, Dede Tepe, and uh, she'll run us through how you can detect uh, stroke at an early stage and what can be done during the process. So Dede... Thank you for joining us on the show as well. Uh, it's Della. Della, sorry, pardon <laughs> me. Della okay. Tepe, pardon okay. me. And so, um, please go ahead. Okay, as um, Dr. Ridley said from the beginning, we should know the signs and symptoms. Okay. And that should be education. You are there with the person, all of a sudden, you ask the person, talking to the person, the person cannot answer you. Mm. Okay, raise up your arms, the person is drifting. You can see that the facial drooping, face, you know, all twisted. Okay. And then you ask the person, what time did this start? Mm -hmm. Because time is sensitive mm. in stroke. Within four to six minutes, there's an interruption 
of blood flow to the brain. Mm -hmm. And within 8 to 10 minutes, you are dead. Biologically, you are gone. Hmm? So it is time sensitive. So the earlier we know what the person is going through, then we can really come and then help the person. And if all these are being ignored, you can get into heart attack. Doctor okay. also said earlier, mm. stroke and heart attack come in hand in hand. Mm. So if we know what to do when it is getting to cardiac arrest, then that is when we all need to know what we have to do. Wow. For instance, I have a friend who the daughter was watching a film with the father. This child is eight years mm. in the state. Honestly, we start training them as soon as you are interested to learn. Mm. And as soon as you get to like 10, 10 years. Yeah. As, as soon 10 as you years, get to 10 years, yeah. 10 years, kind of like teach them. Mm. And also in the state, if you are not CPR certified, you can't work in any of the hospitals. Wow. Whether you are a nurse, you are a housekeeper, you, are, you work um, as a dietitian, any way in the hospital, even the security, you need to have a CPR certification. Mm. Okay. All right, so please, <laughs> this is scary, yes. but kindly take us through the demonstration so okay. we can so learn. As, and um, Mr. Okay, so as Mr. Samuel said earlier on, that after this charge, he realized that he couldn't do anything anymore. So mm. that was cardiac arrest. The stroke wasn't treated. So when stroke is not treated, because there's an interruption with blood flow to your brain, and, if, and then if there is no blood flow to the brain, that means all the vital organs are being deprived mm. from getting nutrients and oxygen mm. from the heart. So what do you do at that point? So at this point, yeah. as he got into cardiac arrest, he was lucky he made it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people go through this and never come back. Okay. As I always say, our late um, Emisa, mm. he was in the gym. Yeah. He got into cardiac arrest. Mm. And if your heart muscles is not getting mass oxygen, then it means that we call something VFib. That means there is chaos for the uh, heart receiving yeah. blood. Yeah. Therefore, the only thing that can help is this machine called AED. And AED okay. means it's automated external defibrillator. Okay. And this is the only machine that can terminate any chaos in the cardiac muscles. And so everybody should have this kind of machine? This, uh, not or everybody, but for... every public place, uh, we need have this. this. Or people who are high risk, some of you have had a stroke before, diabetic, very bad heart condition, after cardiac surgery. This is not expensive. You can have it at home. All right. So how do you use this? Can you please this is, demonstrate? This device is computerized. Okay. And it's very friendly. And anyone can use it. Mm. Anyone. All right. So as, let's do the CPR first, then this will come in. Okay, cool. So let's say this is Mr. Samuel. All of us are in the hospital or even in the marketplace, even our church. Mm -hmm. Standing on the altar, all of a sudden, the person is gone. What do you do? Yeah. First, you have to ask, are you okay? Don't check the person. Maybe there might be something else. The person might be that being, for, you know, mm -hmm. fell and there is something wrong in the yeah. spinal yeah. cord. So you just have the person gently. Hi, Mr. Samuel, are you okay? No response. Quickly, you check the pulse. Okay. And the pulse, you just have to put your two fingers right in front of your ears, all two, the way down, down to the corner of, kind of like your jaw. Okay. You, you can feel the pulse there. That's the only pulse that will be able to tell you that the person doesn't have a pulse. So if there's no pause, that means the person, you quickly start your CPR. Okay. So let's say that someone doesn't have, CPR, doesn't have pause, mm -hmm. but I will end there. I will check whether the person is breathing. And it takes five seconds. You just listen with your ears. Once I'm listening, I'm looking at the chest, whether it's rising or not. All right. Mr. Someone doesn't have pause. So quickly, you use your palm, the heel of your palm, right in between the nipple. Okay. Riding me to the nipple mm -hmm. in the middle. Yeah. You place it right there. Then you interlace your other hand with your already hand on 
the chest. All right. You should make sure your shoulder is above your hands and your arms are straight. Mm. So when you are able to get onto that, you just press hard. You press about two inches deep, mm. hard and fast. Everything is fast and no interruption because this is the only way you are able to, I would say, promote circulation because already the person doesn't have a pulse and you can never do CPR on somebody with a pulse. Mm. If you do it, you'll kill the person. Oh, okay. Yes. So you have to make sure you check the pulse. That is why we are here to teach the public the CPR. Okay. If the person doesn't have a pulse, you start your CPR, you, you start it. You push very hard. Okay. So you can't, you can't, it should be 30 of the chest compressions mm. and two, we call it rescue breath. That is you yourself. You put some oxygen in the person. All right. But at the same time, there has been a study that just the chest compression kind of send oxygen to the vital organs. So you do that how many times? 30 times? 30. You do 30 of the chest compression. Non-stop? Non-stop. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, to 30. Wow. So as soon as you do 30, you come right to the head. We call the head you tell the head a lot of it because most of the time when you are unconscious your tongue fall back and block your airway ah. so you have to make sure you move the tongue out of the way so that your breath can easily be absorbed by the victim mm -hmm. so you tell the head a little bit and then use one finger to raise the chin okay Okay, but before that, we have people are also afraid because of diseases. Thank God, we have this called CPR shield. Mm -hmm. And we'll be, we'll, we will have this one also to the public. Okay. Okay, so that, I mean, we have diseases going on. You don't take anything from the victim, and the victim doesn't also give you anything. It has a valve implanted in this. Mm -hmm. So you put it right in the victim's mouth. And this is very easy to carry in your car or carry in your purse. But if I don't have it, I can still go ahead. You can and do the CPR right. without the rescue breath. Okay. okay. Because the rescue breath, as I said, it is they are still debating on it. Okay. But with kids, most of the time, their cardiac arrest is from respiratory arrest. Mm. So the kids need their oxygen. Mm. But the adults, you can go without the oxygen okay. if you don't have the no problem. Uh -huh. So with this, you just you know put in the victim's mouth, hurt it, and mm. then chin raise. Then you taking a deep breath. Okay. Then you. One, it should be one second. What you are doing, you make sure you look at the chest because the moment you are able to give the rescue breath, the chest should rise. Your lip didn't touch the <laughs> person. I mean, so the movies I've watched, they okay. literally. Yes. <laughs> so you take in a deep breath, then you go. Okay. The uh -huh. chest is rising. Ah. All right. So, two, as soon as you give to, you come back. But as soon as you, got, you get your AED, stop the chest compression because this is just to buy time. This is the only mach device that can terminate any electrical uh, fault in the rhythm. Okay? Mm, mm. So as soon as the machine comes, if you are by yourself, if you have someone, please, I need help. The first thing you put the machine on. Adult patient. So it will tell you. If the patient is a child, Press the child button. We have a child button here. So if it's a child, I will just the press the chest. child. And as Remove I said, it's, and apply pads on the patient it's very skin. friendly. So it tells you what to do. Apply pads as shown in the pictures. And everything is written out here. Where to Remove put a pad. So any lay person can use it. Fair skin. Apply pads as shown in the pictures. Remove packet and apply pads onto patient's bare skin. Uh, press pads firmly on skin. Okay, can you explain to me apply why you are placing the, the pads on those two parts of the body? Apply pads okay, this pad the is, the, is going to transmit the energy from this machine the to the victim. 
Okay. Without this a pad, pad as shown in the pictures, the chaosity cannot be terminated. Press pads firmly on skin. All right. If it's a woman, should a it be like underneath the, the breast? It's not the breast. It's right. Yes, a it should be. Kind of so down the breast to the rib. Okay. The picture is right here. All right. All right. The All right. picture is right. So it's very, very easy. To, you just have to listen and look. Okay. All right. Even if you haven't had the chance to use this, mm -hmm. you can easily follow the prompts. All right. Go ahead, yes. please. Apply pads as shown. And by the way, if I may ask, so you use this machine after performing the CPR? As, as soon the as the CPR comes, you as soon as, as soon as the AED arrives, you stop the CPR. Okay, There's, so let's let's just say that I have the APR at home. That means I don't need to do the chest press and no. As, as soon as the person is cardiac, cardiac, just make sure the uh, person doesn't have a pulse and it's not breathing yeah. before then you, you can, can use, it. use it. Okay, so that means you can use it in place of the CPR. As soon as you, you, you use it, you, because it will tell you if there is a pause, it will tell you stop. Oh. The patient is not shockable or All right. the victim. But okay. if the, patient, the victim has a pause, it will tell you don't need it. Ah. Okay, all right. Carry on. Okay. Press pads firmly on skin. Apply pads as shown in the pictures. Apply pads as shown in the pictures. Mm. Because there's an interruption, I have to put yeah. it off. Yes. No Press problem. Press pads firmly on. Okay. Okay. So the Adult first thing. Patient. If the patient is a child, press the child button. Mm. Press pads firmly on skin. Okay. Apply pads as shown in the pictures. Okay. Uh, press pads firmly on skin. So one on the chest and one on the, the side. Yes. Heart rhythm. One right below the collarbone and right in between, in between. Right Shot. below the breast to the okay to the back okay so it's telling us that the part is on so nobody should be touching the victim he oh. said the patient should be clear the victim should be cleared no one because if you touch it it will be transmitted to you and it will kill you so you have to say it is telling us so now we have to press the shock button so it's delivering the shock so it's telling us to go ahead and do the, continue with the cpr and it's counting for us. Ten. Hmm. Twenty. Thirty. Give two breaths. Okay. Ten. So we are doing it again. The chest compression because the pitch, the victim hasn't gotten the pulse yet, wow. so we keep on doing it. Okay. Thirty. Give two breaths. So you continue till the victim gets a pulse to tell you stop. So what if the victim never gets a pulse? Will it tell you to? It will tell you that the victim is dead. Then it will tell you stop. Then you have to get a. 20. Healthcare percent to come and pronounce it. But most of the time, it does terminate it. It does. 30. Okay. It does so this is an effective tool. It's very, very effective. It's doing miracles in the U.S. It is. Wow. Okay. But you're saying that with this, a health professional should be the one to administer. No, no. Anyone, anybody at all can. Anyone. Any lay person. Okay. As long as I abide by the rules. And you, but you just have to listen to it. Okay. It will tell you what to do. It will tell you when to put a pass on, when to, do, when to give your, do your chest compressions, and when to give your rescue breath. And if the client or the victim, you know, start getting point to sure. tell you, stop. Okay. Not as um, shockable. All right. Okay, last one before I move back to doctor. So let's say I don't have this machine and I'm doing the, you know, the CPR myself. How many times do I need to go back to chest press, blow air into the mouth? How many times should I do this until I give up if the patient does not recover? Normally, it's very tiring. Mm. So they said that five cycles. When you do the 30, five of the 30. And when you do five of the 30, and the patient that's you and the patient somebody else can come and help 
So you can keep going on you and can on keep for on how going. long? Honestly, we just had um, an incident in the in Canada. They did this for 45 minutes. The person is alive. Really? Yes. So don't give up. Keep going. Don't until help, you know. Wow. You, you know, help arises. Other than that, you keep on doing it. So. Ha. And, and it's doing miracles. It's really, it's really doing miracles in the States. I like, really I like it's, that. I like that. And I'm happening. glad that we're educating people because yes. we need this. I we mean, I honestly yes. didn't even know. I thought you could just do it just about two times and after that, oh, no. the person is unresponsive. And you. it's amazing that the adrenaline that we have, if there's an emergency, you can do it by yourself, mm. even maybe for 10 minutes. Thank you so much. Uh, she's Della Tepe and she's an emergency nurse. Back to Dr. Jabuni, Chief uh, Dr. Ben Jabuni, and also we have Mr. Samuel Sedodo. So I was talking about treatments. Now we've seen how you can help resuscitate someone. But okay, this happens, and then right after that, do you rush the person to the hospital for further treatment? Yes. Okay, now what is treatment like? And before, Doctor, let me ask mm. you, what was treatment like for you? Oh, treatment is just last about, say, some three weeks. Three weeks. What did they do whilst you were in the hospital? Oh, at that time, I couldn't. So you couldn't really tell, okay. Yes. But after the three weeks where you discharged, you were still in the hospital for a while? No, no, they discharged me mm -hmm. to home. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, in fact, uh, about uh, two months, they were doing some herbal uh, treatment. treatment. Okay. They, they give me some leaves and then some bags of... The hospital? No, the herbalist. Okay. They give me the herbs, yeah. the back. Mm. the wood so that i'll go and cook myself mm. you were uh, taking that and also taking medicine from the hospital no or you were solely on herbal, solely on herbal okay at that time. how long did you take it for and i'm sure you're still taking it no you know because the cost put me down so i couldn't afford it again ah. uh, this is the most important thing about our challenges you the can. high cost will not let you uh, the treatment cannot complete or you may not have access to the other treatments, and then yeah. it becomes a chronic. How long do you take the herbs? I would say two months. Two months. But then you were still bedridden for three years. Yes. So after the two months, what, you weren't taking medicine? Or you were taking, but it wasn't as constant? Well, it wasn't constant or not effective, I may say. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right, let me come to doctor. So treatment, he says that he relied heavily on herbal drugs. Yes. I've read that you cannot treat stroke with just medicine from the hospital. You have to combine it with herbs. Is that true? It is true to some extent. Okay. Uh, uh, because herbal medicine has been shown to work mm. uh, for some cases of stroke. Okay. Uh, so uh, there, there, there is every indication that um, if treated by uh, herbal uh, medicine, then you have a chance mm. uh, of uh, some recovery. Okay. Okay. Uh, but of course, there is um, uh, medical treatment, uh, which is basically designed, if you'd like, to, uh, to um, dissolve uh, if there is a clot, okay. uh, blocking the pathway of blood mm. to dissolve the clot right. and allow blood to move, mm. uh, to move freely to the brain. Uh, but also, uh, in some instances, uh, uh, surgery can uh, help. Um, um, the, uh, the patient, uh, but that, that that is a very uh, complicated uh, matter, okay. and I don't want to go into the intricacies. So, surgical treatment, medical treatment, and of course also herbal treatment are all uh, uh, good for mm -hmm. somebody who has suffered a stroke. Oh, At I least see. it's been shown to be effective. Mm -hmm. All three types of treatment. Now, after the treatment, what's the recovery process like? because I believe that patients who are unable to walk and are unable to talk are taking through some processes in order to get their old self back. Yes. What is that process this like? Is the, this is probably the most crucial uh, uh, part of um, the recovery of, mm. of the patient, the rehabilitation phase. Apologies. Oh, apologies. Yes. <laughs> the rehabilitation phase is crucial. This is where um, the skills of uh, a multidisciplinary team uh, 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 come to use. Uh, you have um, a physiotherapist, 
uh, who is crucial if you have problems with your limbs, mm -hmm. uh, movement, and so on. You have an occupational therapist as a member of the multidisciplinary team if you have difficulties with activities of daily living, mm. you know, the things that you do on a daily basis. I don't know if he, uh, if he enjoyed that, but from what he has said, I don't think that he had uh, that um, um, uh, package. Okay. Then you have obviously a neurologist who continues to be responsible mm. uh, for, uh, for the medical aspects of treatment. Yeah. You have uh, a psychologist, a clinical psychologist preferably, uh, who will probably help in in things like depression, anxiety, mm. stress, mm. Uh, and um, uh, and such and such matters. You may have memory problems. He did mention uh, yeah. that he had memory yeah. problems. A psychologist will we'll uh, will help okay. with that. So the multidisciplinary team is crucial mm -hmm. uh, after somebody has suffered a stroke mm. in the rehabilitation process. All right. Well, our time is up. I wish I could ask you more, but I, I think we've learned a lot already today. And so I'm grateful and I believe he's getting better. And so we yeah. can't wait to see you walk on your own and get back to your life activities. And which is, that is possible for you to recover completely Indeed. from stroke. Uh, but also I say, if there's an early diagnosis of our treatment, our diseases, this can help us Yeah. so that it won't be a chronic. Definitely. That's what access, that is what SASNET is doing now for me. All right. It's it's me. And we'll talk more about that off yeah. air. But um, I've had Chief Dr. Bendy Jabuni. He's the president of the Stroke Association Support Network Ghana. And also Samuel Sedodo is recovering from stroke. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank a big you. thank you to Dela Tepe, our emergency nurse, who ran us through uh, the procedure in resuscitating um, some patients. And